Hi all, we'll be solving this initial value problem today of y double dash plus y dash minus 2y equals 0 with the initial conditions of y0 equals 4 and y dash of 0 equals minus 5. So the first step to solving any initial value problem is to find the general solution. So we do this first by finding the characteristic equation of this. So we do this by changing this into lambdas. So we've got lambda squared because there's two dashes here, so it's a squared. And then we've got plus lambda because it's only one dash, minus two. And we put nothing here because it's just a y, so it's a one. So now this equals zero. Now we need to factorize this equation. So um, there's two numbers that multiply to equal minus two, but plus to equal one. And those two numbers are plus two and minus one. So that means we can factorize this equation into lambda plus two and lambda minus one equals zero. So now to solve for lambda, either lambda plus two equals zero or lambda minus one is zero. So we've got lambda plus two equals zero, lambda minus one equals zero, and rearranging, moving the one over means lambda equals one and lambda equals minus two. So now we've got two values for lambda. So we've got two solutions to the characteristic equation. So we can then write this in the form of the general solution, which is of the form y equals c1 e to the lambda x plus c2 e to the lambda x. So we've got two solutions for lambda, so they can go in here. So we've got y equals c1 e to the minus 2x plus c2 e to the 1x, which is just x. So this is the general solution. So it's called the general solution because we don't have the values for c1 and c2 yet. So the second step is to find the specific solution or the particular solution. So to do this, we need to find the values of C1 and C2. Notice yet we haven't used these initial values yet. So let's use those. So we've got y equals C1 e to the minus 2x plus C2 e to the x. So let's first differentiate it because we've got an uh, initial value here, which is the differentiation of y. So we can get the differentiation of y for this equation and then use this value. So you've got y dash equals minus 2c1 e to the minus 2x because this minus 2 is coming down here when you differentiate an exponential. And then for this one, the differentiation of e to the x is just e to the x because there's nothing outside the 1. So this is plus c2 e to the mi uh, e to the x sorry so now we, we can use these initial values to find c1 and c2 so let's do that now so y of 0 equals 4 so if we substitute 0 for x and set this whole thing equal to 4 we'll be able to get an equation that can be used to find c1 and c2 so we've got y of 0 equals c1 e to the minus 2, 0, because x is now 0, we're changing this, plus c2 e to the 0. And also for this one, so y dash of 0 equals minus 2 c1 
e to the minus 2, 0, plus c to e to the 0. So these look a bit complicated now, but we can actually simplify these down. So minus 2 times 0 is 0, and e to the 0 is 1. So this actually turns into c1 times 1. So this is c1 times 1, and e to the 0 is 1, so this is just c2, so it's just plus c2. Same for here. So e to the 0 is 1, and we've got a minus 2c1, so it's just minus 2c1 plus c2, because e to the 0 is 1. And remember we said that y of 0 equals 4 and y dash of 0 equals minus 5. So if we take this, we know that c1 plus c2 equals 4 and minus 2c1 plus c2 equals minus 5. So we can use these now. To calculate c1 and c2. So we've got two equations, let's write them on top of each other. So we've got minus 2c1 plus c2 equals minus 5 and c1 plus c2 equals 4. Now you can see if we minus these two equations the c2 will go away because you've got c2 minus c2. So we're going to minus them. So how do we do that? We minus the left-hand side on this left-hand side and the right-hand side for the right-hand side. So we're going to go um, minus 2c1 plus c2. That's the left-hand side of the first equation. And now we're going to minus this, which was c1 plus c2. And we're going to have to do the same for the right-hand side. So it's going to be minus 5 minus 4, because we're minusing this equation from this one. So this leaves us with minus 2c1 plus c2. We've got a minus c1 here and a minus c2 here, because you bring this in, and it, the negative and the positive become a negative, so it's going to be negative c2. And minus 5 minus 4 is minus 9. So this is going to give us, you can see it's a plus c2 here and a minus c2 here, so these cancel. So now we're left with a minus 2c1 and a minus c1, which is minus 3c1, and we've got a minus 9. So we can now divide the minus 3 on this side, which leaves us c1 equals 3. Now, so we've only got 1c1. Now we need to find c2. So now we can take the solution we found for c1 and put it into one of these two formulas. It doesn't matter which one. They both do the same thing. So I think this one's easier because it's dealing with less bigger numbers and there's negatives where this one's just positive and it's quite easy. So let's put c1 into this equation here. So if we put 3 instead of c1 here, it's going to be 3 plus c2 equals 4, which means c2 equals 1. So now we've got our c1 and c2 solved. So that means we can substitute these back into our original general solution equation, which if we remember from earlier, was y equals c1 e to the minus 2x plus c2 e to the x. So if we put c1 in here and c2 in here, we'll get a final solution of 3 e to the minus 2x plus e to the x. So that's the final solution for the initial value problem that we first described.